Hi, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. In this video, I want to talk about how I would change education. Hey, so welcome back. If you haven't seen the news yet, I am currently running for a Texas State Representative District 127. Yes, I finally decided to get into politics, uh, mainly because of what I'm seeing isn't working. So I have thrown my hat in the ring and I am currently running. So if you'd like to know more about my campaign, be sure to check the descriptions down below. I've got links to both my webpage as well as my Facebook and Twitter page. And you know what, even if you're not in my district, education and these issues face everyone. And I wanna hear from you as well as if you agree with me, please by all means support me. Um, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I answer people back. If you have concerns, you have questions, I do my best to talk to you on uh, Facebook or Twitter or through the YouTube channel. So I'm not one of these people that just say something and disappear, like so many others. Anyways, here is where I stand on educational policies. Here's where I would like to see change. Now, first of all, again, for those of you who've been following me forever, you know that I am a trained educator. I have over 15, 16 years in the classroom. I have a master's degree in education, uh, specifically educational technology from Texas A&M. I've taught at or have spoken at state conventions on education. I've been a public school classroom teacher. I've taught private school and I currently teach college. And so my perspective on education is actually working in the trenches. Uh, my wife is an educator. My mom was a teacher. My mother-in-law, rest her soul, was a teacher. And so education <laughs> runs in the family, as it were. So when I start talking about education, it's from somebody who has had to deal with laws and policies created by lawyers and business people and honestly folks that couldn't even substitute in our public school system. And yet we're supposed to give them authority over making laws and regulations that we're supposed to follow as teachers. And so here are my big things that I would like to see changed. First of all, individualizing education. The one size fits all model is a bad model. And it doesn't matter if this model is coming from the federal level or the state level. The idea that one method can fit everybody is ridiculous. It doesn't work. And we don't we don't accept that for anything else. We don't accept that there's just one model of house that we're all going to use or one model of car that we're all going to use or one model of medical coverage or care. I mean, the idea that one size fits all doesn't work. And if you're a big guy like me, you know that one size fits all clothing is also a lie. So I want to see this getting rid of. And the thing is, is that we created our school systems. We created the framework of our schools back before personal computers we created the framework for schools before the invention of cars. I mean, our school system is from the agrarian society. We created our school setups back in the farming days of America when that is what people did. And we really haven't changed it much over the years. We've patched it here and there. But, you know, there's an old joke that if Rip Van Winkle woke up, woke up today, you could take him around town. He wouldn't recognize anything. He wouldn't recognize airports. He wouldn't recognize hospitals. But he would recognize schools. And that's a sad joke um, because it's true. And so we haven't really made any significant changes in how we teach in over 100 years, which is kind of sad. So we need to utilize our technology that we have available today. Now, I have a bias. My master's is in educational technology. I teach the world online. I have over 140,000 views plus of my educational videos. I teach more people in one month than I would if I taught face-to-face -face for the rest of my life. I mean, we are in a time that is unlike any other time before, and we're not utilizing it. And so we need to really look into educational technology. We need to look into curriculum development and develop personalized education. There's no reason why we have to hold on to this model of a typical school year and typical promotions and any of this stuff. The teachers are being flooded in their classroom with 20, 30 students or more, depending on the grade level. We can personalize education if we take advantage of the tools and technology we have available to us today. But we don't. And we need to change that because this country, we're losing the battle on education. We are being passed over by country after country in science and math. Although, interestingly, self-esteem, we're still number one at, yay, self-esteem, number one. Um, we need to get rid of these standardized tests, okay? These state 
end of year exams, the the star tests or whatever they're, they're called or whatever they were called, the tax, the toss, blah, 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 blah. They're all the same. In fact, if you didn't know this, there are procedures in place because I've had to be trained on the standardized testing. There are procedures in place when a student throws up on the test booklet. Yeah, we have procedures for that. What What's happened to our schools? Uh, seriously. Uh, we need to get rid of these end-of-the-year standardized testing things that just don't do any good. In fact, in some schools, it's considered a good day, elementary schools, if you only have a couple of kids under the desk crying or pulling their hair or biting themselves from the stress. Instead, what I would like to see, because we do have to have some level of accountability. Believe me, I am all for accountability. When I taught at the Humble ISD computer maintenance, every year we went for a standardized exam by an industry and that was my accountability, okay? So I do believe in accountability. And I think we should instead have content-based final exams. What I mean by that is a biology test should be a biology test should be a biology test. A biology final should be standard across, well, excuse me, the state. It should be across the state. And whenever that student passes that biology test, regardless of it's three months into the course or six months into the course or a year and a half into the course, that student then gets credit for biology. And what this allows is, is a student, let's say, who's really good. For example, I was really good in science. Not so good in math, good in science, good in the creative aspects. For me, maybe I need a year and a half of Algebra 1 to really get the concepts. But I might only need, oh, six months to get an entire anatomy and physiology course under my belt. Or maybe six months to get a biology course under my belt. Or what have you. But we need to personalize education more, and we're not doing that. We're holding on to outdated models. The next big point is community. Schools don't work in isolation. They, they don't work. In fact, uh, in my training, you find that there's three parts to a successful school. Community, parents, and teachers. Community, parents, and teachers. We need to bring control of the school back to local people. We need to bring the controls of the school back to the parents of the kids who are going to that school, to the community that relies on that school to produce productive citizens of our country who are critical thinkers. And we need to give control back to the teachers. Yes, what a crazy concept. Of all of the people that we hold accountable in our schools, it's the teachers. Of all the people who have the least amount of power to make a difference are the teachers. But yet, they're ultimately accountable. We need to give power back to the teachers, the, the parents, and the community. The third big issue that I want to talk about is protecting teachers and students. First of all, our country has a teaching shortage. Actually, let me clarify that. We don't have a teaching shortage. We have a surplus of teachers. Now, obviously, you're like, wait, no, no, that's not what I'm hearing. No, we have enough people who are certified to teach. We have a shortage of people who want to go back into the classroom and teach. And why is that? Why are so many people leaving of their profession of teaching. Well, a good reason, a good big reason why teachers are leaving are because of a bad administrators. Bad principals, bad assistant principals, bad directors of this, bad directors of that. We're losing teachers because of mismanagement. In fact, I just saw an article today in New York Times. I'll post the link down there. I think it was New York Times or New York Post about a, a teacher who was blind who was fired because he rinsed his mouth out with Listerine. This teacher was nominated to carry a torch at the Olympics. A celebrated teacher fired. Why did he get fired? Because the principal wanted to be safe. The principal is more concerned about their own career than doing what's right. Heck, here in Humble, Texas, Humble ISD, we had students suspended for giving a fruit basket to another team. They said it was racist. No, it wasn't. But our district, instead of doing the right thing, and standing up and saying, look, this wasn't racist, uh, had no intention of being racist. No, instead, they took the safe route, suspended the kids, good kids, suspended them. Why did they do that? Because administrators in general have no backbone and they're more interested with their political career than with doing what's right for students. And honestly, as a teacher of over 15, 16 years, there is no place in a school system for anybody who's not there for the kids, period. Full stop, end of story. If you're not there for the kids, you need to leave. Simple as that. So we need to look at bad administrators. We re need to remove the barriers that prevent teachers from doing their job. I can't tell you how many rules I've had to ignore because some administrator had some stupid policy 
that would take away from the ability to educate the students. When you run into those policies as a teacher, you have two choices. You either follow the policy and get bad results, or you ignore the policy, hoping that you keep under the radar and you get your job done. So we need to get rid of all of these bull policies, this red tape, this bureaucracy created by people who've never been in a classroom, and give the power back to the teachers, the parents, and the community. We need to get money into the classrooms. Now, we always hear that there's a shortage of money in education, that we're short of money in education, that we don't have enough money. There is actually a lot of money in education. You're thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. There's tons of money in education. If there wasn't tons of money in education, then superintendents couldn't be making $200,000 or more per year. Now, could they? Yeah. $200,000 a year for a superintendent. That's a million dollars in five years. That's not that's not hurting for money. That's that's CEO money. That's CEO money of a company that's doing quite well. But just like me, just like my wife, just like my mother, just like my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, had to do, you have to spend money as a teacher to get stuff for your room. Not because you want it for your room, but because you can't do your job without it in your room. But yet, administration, administrative offices... They don't have to wonder where they're going to get pencils. They don't have to wonder about how many copies they can make. They make as many photocopies as they want. There's nobody saying, oh, you can only make 30 this semester. There's money in schools. There's tons of money in schools. There's millions of dollars of money in schools. But where is it going? People become rich off of school systems. Just look it up. I don't care if you're Republican or you're Democrat, if you're conservative, if you're liberal. There's so much money in schools. People are making millions of dollars off of school systems. Curriculum developers are selling bad curriculum to schools. Technology companies are selling worthless technology to schools. Go to your school's district. See how many whiteboards you have. How many people actually know how to use them? There's tons of money in schools. They're not being used appropriately. We need to put the money in the classroom and not in some administrative office somewhere. And if you think... I'm wrong about this. I want you to go make an appointment with your superintendent. If you can make an appointment with their superintendent, I want you to make an appointment with their superintendent and see what kind of office they have. And then look at the teachers and see what offices they have. Who has the steel desks? Who has the mahogany desks? There's money in schools. Also, 360 evaluations. This goes back to bad administrators. And this, by the way, will take care of a lot of problems. 360 degree evaluations. What I mean by this is that teachers and administrators get 360 degree evaluations. So the principals are evaluating teachers because not every teacher is perfect. Okay? I have seen bad teachers who have no business in the classroom. I've also seen really good teachers get persecuted by bad administrators. So the 360 evaluation is where the principal evaluates the teacher and then the teacher evaluates the principal. Because at the end of the day, who do we need in the classrooms? We need the teachers. We need good teachers. We need good administrators. And so my proposal is that if an administrator gets less than a 50%, because you always have a, you know, a jerk in the mix somewhere, if 50% of your teaching staff says you're a bad principal, you're gone. You're fired. You're out of there. Okay? Or here's another option. Because I worked for an amazing principal when I was in Humble. Uh, he retired. But he would have at least a 90%. If we did this, he would have at least a 90% approval rate. Again, there's always a jerk in the mix. You take the administrator who has the, let's say, 60% disapproval rate, and you partner them with the amazing principal. Because we don't want to lose great principals either. We don't want to lose them. What we want to do is we want to get rid of the obstacles to teaching. And bad administrators are the biggest obstacles you're going to find. And so we need to identify them. And we need to either train them or remove them. Kind of funny. We hear this talk about teachers all the time, right? We need to identify good teachers, blah, 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 blah. How about administrators? Administrators. Because you could have great teachers in a classroom. Again, case in point, look at the, the, uh, the instructor who was blind who got removed from his position because an administrator didn't want to do their job and investigate the case. We see this all the time. That's what teachers unions are for. Go talk to a teacher union rep. See how many times they have to protect teachers from a bad administrator. Better yet, go watch the movie Teacher of the Year. It's on Netflix. It's an amazing movie. It sums up perfectly the problem in education. Let's protect our teachers and students. If a person attacks a kid or a person attacks a teacher, they're gone. They're expelled. Okay? I don't care if you're middle school or you're high school. If you attack a, a teacher, if you attack another student. Now, I'm not saying defend. 
Okay, I tell my kids, you never start a fight, but you finish the fight. You never start the fight. My kids, if they ever start a fight, oh, they're in trouble. But if they are attacked, they defend themselves. And I will get a lawyer and defend them from zero tolerance crap policies. But if a student is attacks a teacher or if a student attacks another student, they're gone. They're expelled. Nope. Bye-bye. Okay? And, and the teacher has the right to file an assault charge. For at some point in time, we expect teachers to be less than humans. They, they can't file an assault charge if they're attacked. They can't file harassment suits if they're harassed. No, no, no. Teachers are humans. Teachers are professionals. Let's start treating them as such, and these problems will take care of themselves. So if a student attacks a teacher, attacks another student, they're gone. Bye-bye. Have, have a nice day. You find something else to do. But you're not coming into the school. You're not putting other kids' lives and safety in jeopardy. End of story. What else? School board members. School board members. This is one's for you. School board should not be a political jumping board. It should not be, I am doing school board to go into politics. You are in the school board, again, for students. You are there to help the kids succeed. How can you tell if a kid's succeeding? How can you tell if a school's succeeding when, when you show up, everybody does a dog and pony show? Every teacher knows when the superintendent shows up or the school board shows up, you don't bring up issues, you do the dance, you do the happy smile, everybody's perfect, everything is great, everything is amazing, okay? School board members, if you want to be on the school board, awesome, good job, I hope your heart's in the right place. You better, however, serve at least five times in a school year, five times randomly chosen by you, no advance notice to the school, but you sub five times in your school district. Five times. The school doesn't know you're coming until you're there. And you are actually subbing for a class five times in a school year. You want to know what's going on in your schools? Be in the classroom. Five times school board members. If you can't do that, you don't belong in a school board because you don't care about the kids. You care about your politics and you care about your career. We need to make sure our teachers are current on educational technology and let us pedagogy techniques. Pedagogy is how students learn. Teachers need constant training. They need to keep their skills sharp. You just can't sit on a 20-year-old degree and never learn anything else. But here's what our school districts do. They ask teachers to leave the classroom to do it. Teachers can only teach if they're in the classroom. By having a teacher go off to a training during their school day, you are leaving students without instruction. You might leave them with worksheets. Now, if you're me, I've got videos. I've got my lecture videos. They're all online. I've got my entire website laid out. I honestly don't need to be in my classroom to teach, okay? But most teachers aren't doing this, which would need to change over the years. But we have teachers in the classroom to teach. You pull them out to training. You pull them out to training. Some teachers are out of the classroom for weeks at a time. If you put all their trainings together, if you put all the trainings compressed together, they're spending over a week away from the classroom. How about we do this like every other profession, which is you do professional development outside your normal work time. So you're going at night, you're going on the weekends, and just like every teachers are like, whoa, 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 no, wait a minute. <laughs> and just like every other profession out there, you compensate teachers for their time. Asking people to work off the clock, I'm fairly sure that's illegal, but it's okay for teachers to do it. No, that stops. Teachers are professionals. They put in long hours as it is anyways, grading papers, doing everything outside of school. Heck, I know one school district, they're making them show up to sporting events if they want to get a bonus on their check. Shame. So you pay teachers either in comp time or you pay them financially for their time outside of the classroom to take these continuing education courses. All right, that was quite a bit, but you know what? I think I laid out my educational platform pretty well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section and uh, keep tuning back. I'm going to talk about all the issues that I want to cover as far as um, where my platform is, what I stand for, what I'm interested in. And of course, this is a two-way conversation. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you think I am out of my mind, if you're like, right on, go for it, please leave comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next week, I'll see you later for now. Bye-bye.